Hello, it's Pete here, and I'm going to introduce you to some wonderful new toolkits from Sizzix. Now, these are part of our multi-tool family. So we've got three different ones, and we're going to have a segment for each separate kit. First up, we've got our intricate kit. This is for the finer things in life. This is for your gems, this is for your sequins and beads, or your very fine die cuts. This is going to come in so handy. Then next up, we have a surfaces kit. This is all about cutting. This is all about distressing. We've got some wonderful tools in here I'm sure you're going to love. And finally, our effects tool kit. So if you love Sizzix effects, maybe you love your mixed media work, but you know what, there's so many more bells and whistles to this one. So we're going to split it into segments, so let's get into the first one. So let's start with the surfaces set. Now this is the kit, how it will come to you. Um, I keep all of my tools in this lovely wallet. Um, let me take it now. This is the hub of everything we do. This handle is ergonomically designed, it's very soft to the touch. So there's an end cap which comes with each set. Now you can choose to either have that on all the time or you can have one tool on each end. It's entirely up to you. This is why we call it a multi kit because we give you the choice there. But I tend to keep my craft knife on the end all the time. This is the first of the surfaces tools. And then alongside that, we have two others. We have a trimmer and we have a distressing tool. Let me show you what they're all about. So, first of all, the craft knife. Now, always keep this on for safety, of course. Now, the blade is quite long and it's quite a thick blade. And that's quite important because the thicker it is, the longer the blade tends to last. The very, very fine ones, they tend to blunt very quickly, which of course we don't want. But if you did want new blades for your craft knife or your trimmer, we do provide those as well. So, to remove the blade, you simply hold it, twist and slide it out. And it's exactly the same, but in reverse order to put the blade back in. So, so that's there. Let's just take a look at the blade itself. Now, I'll just use a steel ruler. Obviously, we all know what a craft knife is and how it works. Beautiful cut, as one might expect, even if you want to go really freeform, creating curves or cutting around something. So it's a great craft knife. Now, when this blunts, and it will over time, as these things do, it will blunt on the tip, which is very important when I move to the next tool, because I'm gonna take this off, I'll replace the cap first, twist that off, so all of these tools slide in, twist, and it's ready to go. So we'll take that off, and then we'll come to my trimmer. Now, this is really clever. Obviously, you know, when you don't have your craft mat with you and you want to cut things like say for example a texture roll which is 48 inches long so if I just want a section of this I can take this trimmer and I can just slide it across like that really really great cut um, also if we're talking about even something like this the sculpting foam again very different material but you get the same clean crisp cut and if you want to go in a curve as well, you can do that. Obviously, card and paper are opulence, are standard card stock, same thing there entirely. Now, these were obviously, um, if you're sitting down a few days before Christmas with a ton of presents ready to wrap, this one really earns its keep because what we'll do here, we'll roll that out, Place it on the edge of the paper, boom, straight across. Absolutely wonderful, really, really cool tool. But, but this is the clever part, and this is where I want to um, pay tribute to our wonderful engineers here at Ellison, because inside this is your blade. So if I just tap that out, you'll notice it's the same blade as we have with the craft knife. Now, this one, when it's in its housing, only the center of the blade wears, and it will wear over time. It will become blunt with continued use. So remember how a craft knife, the tip wears, with this one, the center wears. So 
When this one becomes blunt and that one becomes blunt, we simply swap them over and they're good to go. It's like having two brand new blades. So it really does extend the life of your blade. And simply slip them back on the top, ready to go. Now there is one other tool which comes in the kit and this is our distressing head. Now it used to be about vintage and grunge type makes but now people are using this for shabby chic and just sort of really rustic makes and what you do is you place it on the edge of your paper and just run it back and forth because there's a circular blade in here, semicircular I should say, and we run that across and it just distresses the edge of that paper, gives you a lovely kind of edge. Now you can use it at that angle, that angle. Some people prefer to use it like this, hold the paper like that. It's entirely up to you, but of course, with four different areas, that means that your blade will last four times longer, however you choose to use it. And this is a sample of some rectangles of card which we've cut with our frameless rectangles. And you can see we just delicately distressed the edges. It just gives you something, something really nice, something really extra to build up dimension. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our surfaces toolkit. Now let's take a look at our wonderful intricate kit. Now again, three tool heads and the handle. And I've got all my tools here in my wallet. So we'll take one of the handles. Well, actually no, what we'll do, let's take the third component of the kit out, which is our dry adhesive eraser, because the other two, well, I tend to keep them on the handle one on each side. This is, this is one of those where I like to have these in place all the time because they do work together. And I'll demonstrate exactly why in a second. But let's take, um, let's take a piece of card and this is our tape runner. Now, the adhesive eraser, it works with dry adhesive. So the tape runner, for example, um, we're talking about things like our adhesive sheets as well, which is just like double-sided tape in a six by six format. And also things like, you know, those little adhesive squares to get dimension or adhesive tape. So I'm gonna put a bit of that on there. So let's get some down. now. Sometimes we put a bit too much on our project and it picks it up. We can, we can see the shine of it. So if we do, that's where the adhesive eraser comes in very, very handy because it doesn't work like a standard eraser in that it wears down. It, it will wear down eventually over time, I suppose, but it's for picking the adhesive away. So if I rub over here, so you see what it does it kind of goes in, it lifts it off, then you simply pick that away from the rubber. So eventually that will move, remove all of the adhesive without impacting the surface of your cut. And that's very important because if you use a standard eraser, what that tends to do is it will scuff the surface. It will change the look and feel of that. So we're just going into that. We keep moving it around. So you see it's balling up that adhesive until eventually it's all taken away. Now, I mean, we've all done this in the past where we've used our fingers to rub that away and left a dirty mark or a greasy mark. Um, you don't get that with the adhesive eraser. So it's a very, very handy tool indeed. And you can see that starting to ball up until eventually it's all removed. Very, very handy piece of kit. Anybody who's a maker, anybody who's a paper crafter will understand the necessity behind a tool like that. Now let's talk about the push tool and the pickup tool, which are the other two components of this kit. So again, I'm going to place, I'm going to make a line with my um, tape roller. So a little line on there. Let me pick that up so we can move that around in the lights so that you, hopefully you can see that. And this kit, as I said earlier, this is about the finer things in life. So I'm going to take some of these sequins. Now we have various shades and tones and colors, metallics as well, of these sequins and beads. And there are five separate pots. 
with different styles, different shades, and so on and so forth. What I like to do, however, is pour them all into the tube. And it's kind of like a kaleidoscope. I wish I could get some, some glitter balls or disco lights on these. It's fantastic. So we'll shake some of these out into my little saucer. Now, tweezers. For little things like this, they're not ideal. If you pick up a bead with a tweezer, I guarantee at some point you'll put too much pressure, it will ping across the room. Same if you're picking up adhesive gems and pearls. Okay, so it's not the best tool for intricate work when you wanna get these precisely in position. So what we have here, this is, the tip is slightly tacky. Now, this will gather dust eventually and it will become unusable. All you need to do is wash it off under warm soapy water and it comes back to normal. It's as good as. So let's show how we use something like this. So let's say I'll pick up one of these small little gems. Then maybe one of the larger ones. There we are. So we can keep putting these down. We can put them, but crucially, we'll put them exactly where we need them. Now, once I've got them in place, I can press them down. So they're not going to come away from that. Now, you see there's a little one, an errant one. So I can push that out, pick it up again, place it exactly where I want it. And this push tool, you can make micro adjustments to get it exactly where you need it. Now, we can just go through picking up all the ones that we want and none of the ones that we don't. That's the crucial thing. So if I want to pick up this bead, there. Now, imagine doing that with tweezers. That's going to ping off. And then putting it down exactly where I need it to be. And then with the end, with the push tool, I can pop that in place. But it's not just about sequins and beads. How about these adhesive pearls and gems? Now. Again, with your tweezers, you pick these up. It, it, they're hard to maneuver and get in position exactly. But you see, I've got this on the end there. I can put that in place. And then I can use this tool to pop it down. If I take one of the pearls, let me move that in position. Now, if I need to, to adjust that slightly, I can do that. That's where my push tool comes in. So, so handy. Um, so that's pearls and gems, and of course, sequins and beads. Now, how about if you've got an alphabet like this? It's absolutely gorgeous. It's uh, an italic alphabet. The letters cut individually. And when they do, it's about placement. And for the fine dyes, and say Tim's colorize, some very fine elements in there. So if we were to take cards like these, for example, where I've used that alphabet. You can pick up the individual die cuts. You can place them exactly where you need them. When, and when there's glue, the glue will still be wet. You can make slight adjustments to that to get them perfectly in line every single time. So it kind of takes the guesswork out. Um, this has been such a popular toolkit here amongst the folks at Sizzix, and I'm sure you'll agree it's an essential kit for paper crafters and makers of all kinds. And there's one other thing I want to show. This is something now we die cut a letter from um, one of our adhesive sheets and then stuck that down there and then we applied all the various pearls and gems and beads and so on and so forth so it's a lovely lovely way of using these but you can think of so many ways that you can you can die cut any shape from adhesive sheets stick it down on a cut and then apply all these little bits and pieces another way that you can use the push tool it's almost like a little shovel so you can pick out embossing powders or glitters and so on and you can put them down exactly where you need them to be a really wonderful kit now we're going to be looking at our effects toolkits as with all the others we have the handle we have the end piece and we have the three separate heads now this is for all of your effects products and also any kind of mixed media uh, applications that you may have in your day-to-day -day making um, i'm going to take i'm going to reach into my wallet here and let's take out the three different heads so we've got the brayer 
and we've got two palette knives. Now, they are distinctly different shapes, and I tend to use them for different applications, although they are quite interchangeable. So, the third thing I'll need, if I'm working as I am today with our Sizzix Creamy Acrylics, is I'm going to want to use my Sizzix Media Mat. And there she is. Right, now, let's take those creamy acrylics. And when we, when we said that in creamy acrylics, uh, we wanted to keep the word creamy in it because they dry matte, but they do have more body than the majority of uh, acrylics for, for the craft industry. So I'll put some, we've taken some paint, there's some primrose and some mango tango there. And what I want to do is take my brayer, and as with the other tools, you simply slip it in and twist. It's ready to go. Now, the brayer it spins beautifully, um, which is really, really important, as we'll come to show in a second. Also, you can just take it out like that, so when it comes time to clean it, you don't have to clean around this. It's just this, Pete, and then back in. Just clips into place. Now, there's a finger mark there or a thumb so if you want to apply more pressure you always have that and some people like that it helps as a guide um, but we'll see how it works as we go through now you can see I'm starting to spread my creamy acrylics and what I'm doing now is I'm going back into and I'm lifting this brayer because I want to get full coverage all over the brayer and as I do that I'm starting to get these paints to blend in the center. And then once, once I have that, so you don't want too much paint on your brayer. You don't want too little either, otherwise it'll dry out. You see, I'm moving across the center of the piece of card. And then get the pink out to this end as well. Wow, really, really cool. So that's a lovely, almost like, a tropical sunset so you know that would make a perfect car front in itself or you could use this once it dries you could use it to, to die cut shapes from that so it gives you more interesting textures to work with um, another another thing you could do with this because our paints even though the dry matte they deflect you can emboss this afterwards and you get a really clean clean emboss without any paint cracking now let's take Let's take another piece of white card. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it into, into the paint from before. And I'm going to try and get some really kind of interesting patterns going on there. Wow, it's pretty cool, that is. There we are. So you can keep putting that down until you get it exactly how you want it. And that, that in itself, that's a wonderful background. Again, use it to die cut some shapes from, or indeed to emboss. Now, I'll take a piece of matte board. This is Sizzix matte board. Well, actually, let's spread this out a bit more and see what interesting textures we can get on this and just lift that away like so. So again, that's really cool. You can keep adding to that. You can put new layers on it, different colors. Doesn't really matter. Um, but I want to show you the palette knife as well. Uh, I'm going to use the longer one for this because this is the one that I like to use when I'm applying color and so on and so forth. So let's take our two colors once more. There's the Primrose and the Mango Tango. So take another piece of card. This, this is gorgeous. The way that you can spread that, the way that you can get that scumbling effect. You can see there's a little bit of body to this paint. So if you wanted to get texture effects by tapping it like that, it holds its texture. Let's bring in some of the Mango Tango. So we'll blend that there into the primrose like that. Just really, really fun. Um, that in itself, ah, you can pop that in frame. Or you can put a die cut on top of it. You can do whatever you want with that. But that will, it's shiny now, but it will dry matte. So, so let's put that to one side. Let's take my, so this is the great thing about having a multi-tool. They're completely interchangeable. And let's take that one there and run this over my square. So remember, we've got the underpainting from before. And with this one, I can put it on the back, see what I can pick up. Uh, wow, that 
I mean, there's a piece of modern art in itself. Pop that in a gallery, who knows? Um, probably not. Now let's spray a bit of water into this paint and change back to my palette knife because I'm going to pick some of that up. And if I take if I take this background that we made earlier, pick some of that paint up, and I can now use that to flick like that. So it's a way of controlling that splatter effect. It's quite a difficult effect to control, but by using this, and you know what, if you put your thumb down there, you get big splatters. If you put your thumb down there, you get smaller splatters. So you really, you really can control that. So if I spread that out a little, I can take this, I can pop that in. There's so many ways of getting different textures. Um, which is really really cool of course there are metallic paints as well metallics emboss so well so you can get that ombre effect this is gold and rose gold together this is a rose gold and silver but can you see the texture in there and that's what you're getting with creamy acrylics and the way that you apply them with a palette knife and the palette knife is so important now We've gone with plastic palette knives. Um, I love plastic palette knives, but some of the ones you get, some of the cheaper ones, because of the way that they're made in a mold, they're what we call flash there. It's, it's, it's like where you get the rough edges, no rough edges on these, really, really smooth, absolutely gorgeous. Um, so, you know, when, you, when you're going with a brayer, when, you, when you're doing those techniques over the top like that, just something that simple, you can create beautiful, card backgrounds like these and that's with just a really simple die cut alphabet die cut from our gorgeous metallic cardstock so it's a lovely way for creating backgrounds but it's not just it's not just about the paints as well these were done this was done with distress inks this one was done with distress oxides just playing around with your brayer you can pick the inks straight up off the pad with your brayer apply them to the backgrounds and you can get some really really neat effects now let's show how to use the tools with some of our other effects products and uh, i'm looking at dimensional paste and pearlescent medium here and you can see i put some paint down there's some dimensional paste with some paint. We're going to blend that together. But let's take the pearlescent medium. It's a wonderful, wonderful product, this. Um, and it is a medium, as the name suggests. So if I take my tool, and this is where I'm going to use this palette knife. This is the one that I like to use for blending. It's also the one I like to use for lifting mediums and so on out of the pots. So let's see how these blend together because Depending on how they work, it, some will give you a certain texture, some will give you a certain luster. So this is the primrose paint blended with the pearlescent medium like that. That's really, really nice. So therapeutic. I, I do love just going through the process of doing that. Now I'm blending together the acrylics with, and I tend to go for about a 50-50 mix here. So this is the dimensional paste and the acrylics. There you go. Perfect. Now, let's see the different, the different effects. Um, I'm going to take a piece of card. Let's take, let's start off with, this is acrylic with pearlescent medium. So what this will give you when it dries, it has a lovely pearlescent sheen. So rather than go out and buy pearlescent paints, simply add the medium to your Sizzix Creamy Acrylics. This is the texture paste. And as you can see, we can get more body, we can get textures, we can place that down and lift it up and get a really dramatic dynamic texture and then finally just the paint by itself and you can see where the creaminess comes into play because you can get a slight dimension with that paint so there's three ways of using your acrylics and bringing in different mediums so that obviously this is going to dry clear um matte i should say uh, this is the paint mixed with texture paste and finally mixed with that gorgeous gorgeous pearlescent medium to give you a really unique sheen 
two other effects products which are, which are great to use with your tools are Crystal Paste and Crystal Blaze. Now, these are very different. The Crystal Paste tends to be more dimensional and slightly opaque as well. So it's great for snow effects. And this was applied to the frame through a die cut stencil. Now, if you have any of those little houses or maybe you've got Christmas wreaths and stuff like that, and you just want to add just a little bit of this paste to get the idea of frosting or what have you, absolutely wonderful. And this is the tool for the task. Now, Crystal Blaze, it's somewhat different. Crystal Glaze is clear, but it has that wonderful sheen to it. It still has dimension. It's a much softer, more rounded dimension, but a really cool product. But because this is clear, it's absolutely wonderful when it comes to blending. Now, you can blend it with inks. I have a, I have a couple here. So one's, one's like a pinky red. The other one's very much like a pillar box red. Um, if you spray these onto the crystal glaze and then blend it together using this tool and then applying it to cards, you're going to get something like this. Now, that may not look like much in itself, but just imagine once this dries, you actually die cut some shapes. And these were the actual ones which I used to die cut the flowers to create this card. And I'm holding it like this because I've got horrible finger marks on it. My bad, I'm afraid. But um, look, at, look at the glaze there. Look at the sheen. And there's also, you get the marks of the tool as it runs over. So, so there's a slight dimension there. Really, really cool. And finally, another one there. But you've got the same, same kind of thing going on. Um, absolutely wonderful. So whatever you want to blend together. So that's a yellow and an orange. We've got, oh my goodness, we've got different shades of red there. Um, purple and blue. Now, anything like that, but it does make for the most wonderful, wonderful die cutting. So that's crystal paste and crystal glaze. So we're going to talk about our brayer again. And remember, at the beginning, we made this lovely ombre background with the creamy acrylics. Now, here are some examples using different colors where we've actually embossed them afterwards because I said that they don't crack or fade or anything like that. But we've got these lovely ombre. So you choose your colors, choose your embossing folder. The results are always going to be stunning. There is one other thing that I want to talk about with embossing folders, which is quite important. When you're using a brayer, and this, this is where this tool really comes in handy in conjunction with Sizzix products. Now, this is a multi-level embossing folder. It's called Palm Repeat. And what I could do, say I took, for example, this is archival rink. It will work with distress ink, distress oxide, probably all of, your, all of your different inks as well. I like to use Icarval, but you can apply the bray as you did with the paint and then run that onto the folder like that. So essentially what you're doing is you're turning this embossing folder into a printing plate. Then you put your paper in as per usual, close it up and pass it through your machine. Now, what that will give you is something like this. Now, this is something you can only do with multi-levels because ignore the green for now because it will come out with the blue on the background and the top will stay white until you apply that color of green. So you can clean off your brayer and then go over the top with the second color and you can get effects something like these. So just mess around with the colors. Just, just see what works. There's no rights or wrongs. They all turn out pretty cool in the end. Um, there you go. So there's the greens again. There's a couple of shades of green. There's a red and a pink. And this is just, this is just a card that I made. So I just cut a little panel, popped it onto there. But you know, that's, that's using multi-levels, but with some of our 3D embossing folders, this one was called Half Mandala, for example, and that is using two shades of ink. There, you can see I've got two slightly different shades, or even cutting, cutting it into little tiles like that. That's a really, really stunning, very, very classy look. And there's another similar one there with a different embossing folder, but you know what? It's all about the brayer. It's all about the brayer. Try the different inks, mix them together, blend them, do, do whatever suits your fancy, but you're always gonna get stunning results. And 
what we what we've covered today what we've talked about this just covers a few of the applications using these wonderful tools from our effects toolkit so there we have it that's our three multi tool kits we'd love to know what you think of these kits i mean choose your favorite we hope you choose all three because that's what it's all about it's all about the interchangeability so you can find more content including these kits on youtube on instagram on facebook um, all the usual places please comment let us know what you think let us know what you're doing with these we love to see what you're doing out there i'll see you again soon